Okay, uh, good morning. Since this session deals with Compass API, so uh, today I want to talk about some of the considerations in demonstrating API uh, synness. Uh, this is a standard disclaimer. Uh, so for this talk, I want to first give you an introduction talking about the uh, relationship between API synness and uh, generic drugs. And then I want to talk about how we use totality of evidence approach to demonstrate complex API sameness and uh, some of the considerations during that process. Uh, so first thing first, why do we care about API sameness uh, for generic drugs? I think this morning uh, Dr. Wu um, touched on this topic, but I still want to go over this to re-emphasize this. So by regulation, a generic drug must be therapeutic equivalent to the reference product which means that it should be approved as safe and effective. It should be pharmaceutically equivalent to reference product. Also, it should be a bi-equivalent to the reference product. So in addition, it need to be adequately labeled and also manufactured in compliance with the CGMP regulation. Here, I highlighted the pharmaceutical equivalent. Pharmaceutical equivalent means when compared with reference product, the uh, generic version need to contain the same active ingredient and also in the same dosage form and the raw administration and also have the same strength of uh, concentration. So a pharmaceutical equivalent product must meet the same uh, compendial standard for strength, quality, purity, and identity. So basically API synthesis is a requirement for the uh, generic drug. Different APIs can be roughly classified into two categories. One is simple API, the other is complex API. For example, a simple small molecules with defined structure or a mixture of a few small molecules with fixed ratio, those are called uh, simple API. On the other hand, complex API include like peptide, polymers, and heterogeneous small molecule mixtures or micromolecule complexes. In terms of characterization, simple API can be characterized using traditional analytical methods such as HPLC, MassSpec, MAR. And uh, if you are solid uh, material, then you can use TXRD, uh, the TGA, DSC, they mirror the uh, particle size distribution. But complex API, the characterization is more complex. For example, if you have a mixture of material, then you probably need to study the molecular weight distribution. Physical chemical characterization is still essential, but in addition, you need to study the uh, mixture and uh, maybe structure signature analysis. For some of the product, you need to analyze the uh, biological activity. And as Eric mentioned, probably in some cases, you need to study the impurity profile as well. So this will bring us to the topic of my talk considerations in demonstrating API synthesis, which include the source of starting material, reaction scheme, structural signature analysis, and the physical, chemical, and uh, biological activity evaluation, and in some cases, impurity profile assessment. So for FDA, we take those factors into consideration when we develop complex API products specific items and also review ANDAS or product with complex APIs. In this talk, I will give you two examples to show you how we use the totality of evidence approach in the real case. One example is a low molecular weight heparin, which includes enoxaparin and deltaparin. The second example is co-cell development hydrochloride, the synthetic polymer. So let's start from the first example, the low molecular weight heparin. No molecular weight happen, as we know, it's used for prevention of deep wind rock cloud. From the starting material point of view, the both enoxaparin and heparin are from the poison heparin. There used to be another heparin called uh, bovine heparin from cow. Even though clinically bovine heparin is similar to poison heparin, bovine heparin cannot be used as a starting material for the low molecular weight heparin. Here I'll show you the proton MR of the bovine and the poison heparin. The 
bottom red one, uh, if you can still see the color, is a Poisson heparin. The top blue one uh, is the O1 heparin. As you can see, those two spectrum do not overlap with each other, indicating the chemical structures are different. So if you look at the schematic representation of the heparins, heparins are a mixture of polysaccharides. And each chain is made of different building blocks. And each building block is a disaccharide. So the arrangement of those building blocks is basically controlled by biosynthetic pathway. So it's not surprising that portion heparin is different from O1 heparin. But for heparins from the same source, I meet the compendial standard. For example, in this case, a USB monograph would have very similar building blocks and also the arrangement. Now let's look at the reaction scheme. As we know, both inoxaparin and dataparin are from Poisson heparin. But the transformations used to obtain those two products are different. For inoxaparin, it is from the alkaline depolymerization, which gives us, if you are a chemist, a characteristic double bound at the non-reducing end of that structure. But data purine, on the other hand, is from the nitrous acid depolarization, which give you a characteristic 2,5 anhydro bonito structures on the kind of right hand side. So even though they both call low molecular heparin, they have different structures. So also the depolarization uh, mode is different. But to make generic version, we need to use the same mode of depolarization in order to get the highly similar modified building blocks uh, on the terminal end. So imagine if you have an equivalent starting material, equivalent reaction scheme. How do you know you get the same product? So that basically brings us to the third point, the structural signature analysis. Structural signature analysis is something done in addition to physical chemical characterization. And also, I want to emphasize there's no standard method for structural signature analysis. It's basically product specific. Structural signature analysis but it's important because it can be a tool to evaluate the process signature. In the inoxaparin case, the structural signature may include like disaccharide building blocks, Fragment after enzymatic um, uh, cleavage and the oligosaccharide sequence. The structure signature also linked to the starting heparin structure and also the depolymerization process signature. So the goal here is to demonstrate equivalence of structure signature of your generic compound to the reference compound. But in addition, we also need some other categorizations to demonstrate API sameness in this case. For example, the physical chemical copy characterization, like overall composition, spectroscopic data, and some USP uh, test. Uh, in addition, we also need biological activity evaluation. For example, the in vitro anti, anti factor 10A activity, and also the ratio between anti factor 10A and anti factor 2A ratio. Also, would like to have the PD, in vivo PD uh, assessment. In this case, we also need to evaluate the impurity profile to make sure there's no increased risk in your generic copy about the uh, heparin induced frontal cytopenia. So, once you demonstrate equivalence in all those aspects, you can say that you use a totality of evidence approach demonstrate API for the low molecule with heparin. Basically, you just review that uh, you demonstrate equivalent in the starting material, equivalent of the reaction scheme, equivalent of structure signature, and the equivalent of physical, the biological properties and the impurity profiles. Here, yeah, I just show you a reference published in uh, 2013, which has a more detailed discussion on the inoxaparin case. And you can take a look if you like. I also provide a web link for the product specific guidance on inoxaparin, which was developed under the same uh, thinking. Now I want to switch 
switch gears to talk about the second example, post-cell volume hydrochloride, a synthetic polymer. Post-cell volume hydrochloride is a bioassay question used to lower the cholesterol level in the treatment of hyperlipidemia. If you look at the synthesis, it's starting from polyalloamine hydrochloride through cross-linking at the cross-linked uh, intermediate first, uh, then followed by two alkylation reactions generate this polymer as shown on the right side. If you look at the starting material and reaction scheme, it's pretty straightforward. But the devil is in the details. And um, how do you know the polymer you get has the same structure as shown for the reference product? So in order to analyze that, we need to, again, do the structure signature analysis. In this case, the goal is to find out the percentage of the unreacted amine, the cross-linked amine, and the each individually alkylated amine in the polymer match the one in the reference product. And basically, it means that you need to define the value of A and A prime, as I shown in the uh, slide, B, e, C and C prime, and E and D prime, to make sure those values match the uh, claimed value of the reference product. Since the product is a polymer, it's difficult to analyze everything in the final product. So it probably makes sense to analyze the intermediate, the cross-linked intermediate, which you can get a degree of cross-linking, basically the D value from the intermediate, which is carried on uh, to the final product. And then you can study the alkylation reaction about the degree of alkylation in terms of C and C prime and D and D prime uh, value. So this way, you can overall get all those values and make sure you have the correct value matching the reference product. In this case, the uh, physical chemical characterization is also critical. Uh, for example, the spectroscopic um, properties, like 13, uh, carbon-13 solid state MR, which can tell you critical information about the cross -link particle size distribution. In this case, each particle is one molecule. So the different particle size represent different molecule weight. Solid state property like DSC, TGA, in this case, like swelling index, also directly correlated to the cross-linking uh, degree. You also can analyze the functional groups uh, and run the elemental analysis. So once you demonstrate equivalence in all those aspects, Again, we can say we use the totality of evidence approach to demonstrate API for the post cell volume hydrochloride. As you can see, when you compare the first example with this example, it's quite different. But we still say we use the totality of evidence approach because we still basically follow the same principle, but just with different emphasis. Um, as we just summarize here again, we didn't talk about too much about starting material because those are relatively simple. Uh, but we still require the same reaction scheme, same uh, structural signatures, and also equivalent physical chemical uh, properties. Here I list uh, two PSCs for coastal and uh, hydrochloride. One is the uh, tablet, the other is the powder for suspension. And I'm uh, happy to say that we just have the first generic approval in May for tablet and in this past July for the powder for suspension based on the uh, guidance we published. Since we talk about PSG, I just want to briefly touch on that. I think other speakers already talked about uh, as well. But my uh, focus is basically on the complex API PSG. It basically represents the agency's current thinking and uh, our recommendation on how to demonstrate API sameness. And those PSG were developed uh, by applying the totality of evidence approach with the product-specific considerations. Again, I want to emphasize the product-specific considerations, so as you can see in the two examples. Uh, this totality of evidence approach also provides a roadmap for the future similar complex API product without a PSC. For example, if you want to develop a complex API product, but we haven't published a PSC, you can use a kind of a similar approach to, uh, 
to do that. So in summary, I hope I uh, showed you that even for a complex API product, we can demonstrate the uh, API sameness through a comprehensive totality of evidence approach. I just want to remind the applicant that they need to evaluate the product-specific issues and apply the principle accordingly. Also, if you want to use a new analytical method in demonstrating API, you need to provide literature support or justification. Just avoid data dumping. It's not like the more, the better. So just make the necessary uh, decision. I know this is a short talk, uh, but I hope through this presentation, you can have a better understanding now uh, on how to handle the complex API sameness issues. So finally, I want to thank the uh, management in OGD for their support, and uh, Andrew Roy in OPQ for uh, his input in some of the slides. Thank you for your attention.